Welcome to Sustainable Development Goals and Library Association. My name is Loy Jun Chin. I'm delighted to welcome attendees as the Secretary of the Management of Library Association section of IFLA and one of the moderators for today's webinar together with Magdalena from the New Professionals Special Interest Group. Although the webinar today focuses on Asia Oceana, librarians from different regions of the world also attend the webinar today. Thank you for all your support. I would like to thank MLAS Chair Loida Gashia Kwebo, who is the IFLA MLAS webinar's coordinating team leader for her hard work and leadership. I would also like to thank IFLA New Professional Special Interest Group, Madalina and Bona Utani, and her entire team for the collaboration with Zoom and the breakout rooms. And also Mr. Winston Robert, Chair of the IFLA Asia Ushana Regional Division Committee for his collaboration and strong support. I shall now go to the next one, the next slide. Can you show the slide, uh, Madalina? Okay. Okay, the next slide is on the sustainable development goals and uh, the second slide. Hmm. Okay, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals and Library Association uh, today for the Asia Oceana region is in collaboration with the new Professional Special Interest Group, MPSIG, the Environment, Sustainability and Libraries Section, and SULIP, and the IFLA Regional Division is proud to announce a webinar series on the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs and Library Association. We want to support library association all over the world. I will now pass the session over to Medelina to explain on the AI translation and subscription. Yeah, uh, thank you, Lojun. So today our webinar, uh, we will use uh, a translations. So give me a few seconds to explain you how we can do that. I just only need to connect with our application and okay and share the screen. Okay. Uh, great. So, uh, our webinar is supported by uh, Wordy translation and transcription. So, uh, please click uh, on the drop menu, drop down menu, uh, in the top left hand corner and select view on custom live streaming service. That's the window you can you can see and the transcription will open in a new window. Uh, so be careful about that and resize your Zoom screen. And so you can see uh, the view of the Zoom window and the worldly window where you can, you can also have uh, your transcription of our, what we are talking here in your, uh, in your language. If you have any questions uh, please feel free to, uh, to 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 write down in our chat chat box i think that uh, wordly works now so i will give a microphone to loy jun thank you loida Okay, I'll talk a little bit about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. Our call to action to end poverty, protect the planet, and improve the life and prospect of everyone, everywhere. There are 17 goals were adopted by all United Nations members. 
including the Asia Oceania region, are used by countries to guide their development efforts from 2016 to 2030. Next slide. Next slide, please. IFLA has advocated for libraries inclusion in the SDGs and development efforts for many years, and in 2014 presented its first program at the United Nations. In the Asia Oceania region, library association has joined this effort. The United Nations has stated that the world is in the last gap of action to meet the SDGs. Libraries are sustainable accelerator. Library associations are key in moving forward the library agenda in each country. MLAS mission is to build and support strong library associations. Collaborating with other IFLA groups and regions of the world, this activity will allow us to support national library association, highlighting effective strategy that will equip them to help the country to achieve development. Our webinar series, Sustainable Development Goals and Library Association, follows the IFLA strategic direction 1.1, Show the powers of libraries in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. A working group from MLAS in collaboration with IFLA New Professional SIG and SULIP and IFLA Regional Division is coordinating webinars about various top topics resulting from a survey MLAS carried out during 2020 to 2021. Thank you to all the MLAS uh, work group for this survey. The webinar format includes interactive opportunities to engage attendees in conversation in languages spoken in the regions. We hope everyone present today will join a breakout session and we will compile information from this conversation to inform programs at the IFLA World Library Congress in Rotterdam. Next. Uh, yes, that's uh, my part. I can. I would like to say a few words about our agenda. So uh, the webinar will have three parts. First, it's uh, we will have uh, three presentations of our speakers from uh, the Asia and Oceania region. Then uh, we will have a part for uh, interactive conversations in breakout rooms. Uh, we will have rooms in uh, where our moderators will speak in English, Malaysian and uh, Chinese. And we all will uh, invite our participants to join uh, to the rooms and talk more about uh, sustainable development and SDGs. So there will be the second part and we will have 15 minutes for that. Uh, when we finish our conversation, we come back here again and we will have a short summary of our conversation with moderators. And uh, the last part will be uh, three uh, presentations uh, of our speakers again. Uh, so uh, I would like to to say that if you have any questions, uh, please write down in the chat box. And also, uh, please remember to turn off your uh, microphones and cameras during our presentations. Uh, and this meeting will be recorded and we will share the recording uh, in the upcoming days uh, and send to our participants and to IFLALIS as well. And uh, so uh, that's uh, the clue. But now we are very curious about our participants and we are very happy that you were able to join us today. So uh, to uh, find out more about you, uh, we would like to ask you and invite to go to the menti.com website and use this code 712 uh, nine four one four nine or just uh, take a photo of this uh, this code and and write your country uh, in in the survey i will stop sharing the screen now and also write in our chat box the code
that you can use it and uh, give you a few minutes uh, to fill in this Metimeter survey and we will find out more about uh, where we are now. Okay, uh, I put the directly link to the to our chat, and I see that we have our answers. So, uh, mm -hmm. so I will share the screen, and we will see our participants. Okay. So great, so we can see uh, that uh, our countries uh, are changing. So welcome again, uh, our participants from Australia, from Nova Mariana Island, from Japan, India, uh, from Australia as well, uh, from New Zealand, uh, from United Arab Emirates, uh, Chicago, Canberra, that so we are very happy that you that you come to us and and have you here. That you can see that uh, our our picture uh, is changing, and and everybody uh, answer. So thank you, thank you again. And okay, so I will stop sharing the screen. And now there is a time for presentation and also welcoming uh, from our moderator of the series from Lloyd Garcia Fibo. Uh, yes, Lloyd June. Okay. Okay, I have the slide, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, Thank you, uh, Madalina. Today, we are very pleased to welcome six very experienced people from Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Pacific Island, and Fiji for today's webinar. Now, I'm delighted to present our first three very experienced speakers for the first part of the webinar. Each speaker will speak for uh, 10 minutes. The first speaker for today is Mr. Winston Robert. He is the chair of uh, IFLA Asia Oceania Regional Division Committee and a senior advisor in the National Library of New Zealand, dealing with national and international stakeholder relations. He will deliver his welcome remarks. The second speaker today is Mr. Kiyoshi Chiba from Japan. Chiba means 1,000 leaf. Digital Communication Assistant at the United Nations Information Center in Northeast Asia, Information Center in Tokyo. He is also a member of Japan Library Association as well as of Japan Association for United Nations Studies. Our third speaker for today is Ms. Linda Naputi from Northern Marianas, she is the president of the Pacific Islands Association and Libraries, Archive and Museum, PIALA, and a member of IFLA Asia Oceania Regional Division Committee. I would like to send an apologies on behalf of the fourth speaker today. She is Rashida Bohasan from Malaysia, 
Uh, she's the special officer in the Ministry of Tourism, Creative and Performing Arts, uh, Sarawak, Malaysia, and also the past president of the Librarian Association of Malaysia. She's unable to attend the webinar today as her mother has taken ill today. Uh, before further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Winston Robert for his welcome remark. Mr. Winston. Okay, thank you, Lojun. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Right, yes, we can. Uh, well, first of all, I am just going to make welcoming remarks. I'm not going to make a long presentation, so I won't speak for 10 minutes. I will, I prefer to donate that, that 10 minutes of my time to other people with substantial presentations. But I think it is important to, uh, well, first of all, welcome to this Asia Oceania webinar. This is um, under the aegis not only of uh, the other units that were mentioned, that is to say, management of uh, library associations, the new professionals, SIG and uh, NSULIB but it's also under the aegis of the Regional Division Committee of IFLA. And for those of you who are not perhaps so familiar with the regional uh, units of IFLA, this is a new structure that was created two years ago. And there are six regional committees, regional divisions around the world, each with its own local committee. and the six regional divisions form a new regional council. So this is, as I say, a new structure for IFLA. We are, even after two years, to some extent, we are still um, still learning. We are still practicing and discovering how we can uh, represent the library sector in our various regions of the world. And it's taken us a while to, to do this learning. We, we've had two years for our first term. Our first committee has had a term of two years. And there's another committee already elected for the next two years, starting from August. And we've had some challenges because, of course, our term of office has entirely coincided with the pandemic. and until just a few months ago, none of us had actually met each other in person. We met only through Zoom. We, are, we have been a virtual division committee. But nevertheless, some of us had already uh, relationships through IFLA, and so we have had a basis of familiar colleagues mixed with some new colleagues, and we have had to learn how to make this regional division committee for Asia Oceania uh, develop and uh, promote various activities. And again, for those who aren't familiar, this committee has 20 people. Uh, not all, of course, are represented on this webinar tonight, but we have members in India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. I don't know how many of those are here. I have not looked at the list, but if they are all here, then I welcome them. And uh, we have been busy over the last two years in promoting activities uh, around the region in various countries. Most of them have been webinars, and many of them have focused on the topic of the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. The reason for this is that when we held the very first meeting of our very first regional council two years ago, it was agreed that the regional council would uh, adopt the promotion of the SDGs as its main goal, as its highest level activity, and that is in support of the overall activities of IFLA for advocacy for the library sector. 
So the regional council advocates for the sustainable development goals, and it has given instructions to each of the six regional division committees to do the same. And those of you on the committee will, will know what I'm saying. Uh, you have been involved in uh, webinars on the SDGs. And I personally believe the SDGs are a, an excellent thing. I've been involved in the, uh, the World Summit on the Information Society many years ago, 20 odd years ago, when the, um, uh, which was the initiative from which the SDGs originally sprang. And they were uh, developed further by the United Nations with the support of civil society organizations in 2015. And the SDG program that we have now is the program which everyone is following, which has been shown to you on the slide this evening, the 17 goals. That program began in 2015 and is supposed to finish in 2030, 25, 2030. Um, and we, the library associations, as you know, of course, I'm only telling you things you know, we have been pr particularly promoting the goals which we think are the most relevant to the library sector. For example, goal four, education, um, and particularly also goal 17, which is um, the, the goal for partnerships. But there are many other goals and indicators for the other goals which relate to the library sector and education work and information work in different ways. So the other presenters tonight will tell you details about those things. But I, a point which I particularly want to make is that you've probably also heard that the goals are slipping. The work towards the SDGs is falling behind. We've we've heard this for the last five years, maybe. There have been concerns expressed that work towards the goals is 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 running behind. It's not. It's running into difficulties. Well, yes, um, the Millennium Development Goals twenty odd years ago were. Uh, not successful because they were too rigid. And the sustainable development goals were carefully designed to be more flexible, sustainable in the long term, and adaptable to new circumstances. So to some extent, it is not uh, such a problem, perhaps, that there is there are delays. However, some of the things that have happened in the last five years or so or 10 years have been unexpected. There have been obviously um, conflicts around the world. There have been economic crises and there have been uh, there has been climate change. And of course, there has been the pandemic, all of these and natural disasters, as well as man-made self-inflicted disasters. And all of these things have led to delays in the work on the SDGs. And it's true that they are sl slipping behind. The Secretary General of the United Nations has convened, is going to convene in September this year, a summit on the SDGs. And he has issued an interim report on progress so far. And I think um, probably my colleague Kim Donga will tell you something about that. But one point in the Secretary General's report is that is an admission that yes, it's falling behind, but he also says that there are reasons to be optimistic. We can simply redouble our efforts because it's always possible, I guess, to push out the goals further. The, uh, I do believe that the SDGs are flexible. The initiatives that they are representing uh, are worthwhile. The research that went into the, the design of the goals and the indicators is valuable research. It is still valid. 
and even if some of the indicators need to be adjusted then some of the founding principles of these SDGs are still worth doing work worth working for and we should not uh, lose hope we should not give up these this SDG program because it's falling behind we should find ways to counteract that so I don't uh, I don't regard the Secretary General's uh, report as the end of the story. This is simply, um, yes, it's bad news. It's a bit of a shock that the goals, uh, work towards the goals is uh, falling behind significantly in some cases. But I do think that if m member states of the UN system and the NGO sector, <laughs> if we can all work harder together and analyze what has gone wrong and try to counteract it, then we can make further progress, even at the cost of pushing the goals out further. But what does this mean for associations? Well, library associations are not political organizations. They cannot obviously affect government policy directly, but we can, to use the famous IFLA term, we can advocate for the library sector and that means we can talk to our partners our political uh, our partners in the political sphere in the commercial sphere uh, in philanthropic organizations in technology sector we can advocate to them for the value of library services that we represent and we can persuade them that we have um, we are worthwhile partners in the technical work that they're engaged in and also that we represent some of the uh, activities the actions the initiatives that are specifically referenced in the goals so i do think that we should advocate even more strongly for the achievement of these uh, sdgs and this means that uh, as the other speakers will no doubt tell you, it means that we must continue to engage in activities to educate our members, to raise awareness of our members of the SDGs, to raise awareness of our users and awareness of our partners. And uh, I mean political, business and academic partners in our respective countries. But particularly, I think we should work with our national commissions for unesco and other un bodies but particularly unesco commissions because they and the library sector can uh, as has as we have demonstrated in new zealand and other countries have too we as uh, partners of unesco can um, raise awareness of the general public about the sdgs there are many people among the general public who may think that the United Nations bodies are far away. People say that about IFLA as well. They are international organizations and common people, you might say, the man in the street, the woman in the street, they tend to regard such bodies as far away and remote and therefore not of direct concern in, in daily life. I don't think that's true. I think we need to work with, for example, UNESCO and academic institutions to hold events, to raise awareness of the general public of the urgency of um, not just, uh, this is not just self-interest on the part of the library sector. It is urgent to provide education for our kids. It's urgent to provide information to decision makers, but it's also urgent uh, to, to push ahead with uh, social and economic development and library associations should be doing this in conjunction with our partners in every country so those are the things we should be doing we've been doing those for years we should continue and i don't think we should be discouraged by um, uh, stories about uh, delays and the sdgs okay that's that's my view of the, the topic of this webinar. So over to you, Magdalena. 
Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Winston, for this great talk and and for pointing the ways in which library association can go. It's also a big lesson of, for uh, association from other countries, not only from Asia and Oceania. So thank you again for that. Uh, before I will give my microphone to Lloyd John, I would like to share uh, the recording from Lloyd Garcia Fibo. She is a moderator of this all the webinar series and she's just uh, sent a, a very nice uh, welcoming for all our participants. So I will use this moment to share the screen and uh, show you uh, her recording. Okay, here we are. Welcome everyone. My name is Loida Garcia Fibo. I am the chair of IFLA management of library association section. And I'm very happy to welcome everyone to this sustainable development goals and library associations featuring Asia and Oceania section. We are very happy to present this webinar series featuring different regions of the world and efforts from library associations supporting development. We already presented um, a webinar with the North America Division and with the MENA, Middle East and North Africa Division. Great webinars. We always have a speaker from the United Nations and also feature library associations from each one of the regions sharing examples of work towards development. So we hope you enjoy this webinar and share the information with your colleagues. Thank you. Okay, that uh, it was Loida. She cannot. Oh. Unfortunately, Loida can not uh, be with us because she uh, has a meeting uh, of the governing board in IFLA, but with two great uh, welcoming, I give a microphone to the Lloyd John. Thank you, Madalena. Uh, thank you, Mr. Winston, for your very inspiring um, uh, opening uh, welcome remark to all the attendees today. Yes, uh, we need to support uh, library association, uh, the SDG even to work harder and to analyze the cause of why uh, we are not actually falling behind the uh, goals that we are supposed to uh, be achieving. We will continue to strive for the best and library association will be a strong supporter of this uh, SDG. We need to work with uh, the United Nations and also with academic institutions. So for the social economic development. For this, we uh, thank uh, Mr. Winston and we will go to the next speaker today. Uh, that is the uh, Mr. Kiyoshi Chiba from Japan. Uh, please welcome Mr. Koyoshi Chiba. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes can we you see my slides. Yeah, yes. we can see everything works. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Roy, for your kind introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Kiyoshi Chiba from United Nations Information Center in Tokyo. It's a great honor for me to be invited today as one of the speakers. Uh, first of all, I'd like to pay deep respect to IFRA EMLAS for holding this valuable webinar series on SDGs and library associations, and to Japan Library Association and Japanese libraries for playing their significant roles in promoting the SDGs in Japan. Taking this opportunity, I'd also like to thank UNIC Director and my supervisor, Kaoru, for her encouragement and advice, and other colleagues at Tuning Tokyo for their warm support. And thank you, of course, to Loida of IFLA and uh, for her uh, efficient navigation, and to Magdalena for her kind support. 
well, we are now, uh, as Winston mentioned, halfway to 2030. Regrettably, we are ha uh, far off track. But United Nations is not giving up. The SDG stimulus, the proposed reforms of the global financial architecture, and acceleration agenda on climate. The Transforming Education Summit, Food Systems Transformation. All these initiatives are aimed at getting the SDGs back on track. Around the world, the UN country teams are leading the efforts for sustainable development. And this September, the SDG summit will be held and the world leaders will carry out comprehensive review of the state of the SDGs, respond to the impact of multiple and interlocking crises, provide high level political guidance on transformative and accelerated actions. But more than anything else, a broad ownership of the SDGs and strong commitment by all stakeholders is necessary. And the libraries can play an important role, including through its outreach activities. Today, I hope that I can provide some concrete tips for us to think together. And for that, I'd like to explain to you how Unique Tokyo's local network of partner libraries is engaged. Now, uh, before proceeding to talk about that, I'd like to let you know that in Japan, Thanks to the commitment of various stakeholders, including the government, business, NGOs, media, and the libraries, the SDG awareness now exceeds 90%. According to the survey conducted by Dentsu, the awareness has continued to increase year by year since 2018, when the first survey showed the awareness rate of as low as 14.8%. In terms of ratio of awareness among generations, teenagers' awareness has increased most, as you can see in this graph. All throughout these years, Unique Tokyo, under the umbrella of UN Department of Global Communications has been carrying out its public information activities to raise Japanese people's awareness of the SDGs, urging people to take action. Let me emphasize here that the libraries are one of our most important partners. We have 14 UN Depository Libraries in Japan. They are designated by the Danghamashu Library of the United Nations. And with those UN Depository Libraries at the core, Unique Tokyo has built an informal network of partner libraries during the past two decades which nearly reaches 100 now. It is since the very launch of SDG implementation in 2016 that Unique Tokyo has made the SDGs as the watchword for this network and collaborated with the libraries to promote the SDGs. Well, as one of our initiatives, Unique Tokyo has been holding the annual training meeting with those libraries for us to offer lectures and briefings and for the libraries 
to share their activities for the SDGs. Some years ago, a school girl librarian participated too, whose active contribution to the training inspired other librarians. Since 2021, our trainings are conducted online, which has brought about more participants from more libraries, particularly from remote areas. Now, on behalf of our partner libraries, let me share with you some of the activities that those libraries have presented to us at our training meetings. One of the library's common activities is that the separate placement of the books selected under the theme of the SDGs with the use of graphic icons of the 17 goals. The separate display of the selected books away from the regular open stack are liberating those books from the constraints of Nippon decimal classification to attract the visitor's attention. The great benefit of SDG themed section is that the books selected under the whole set of 17 goals are far more wide ranging than any other selection and also the libraries can allure the visitors to pick up multiple books. That way, the library visitors can deepen their knowledge not only about a certain single topic, but also other topics to recognize the links between the different issues, between three aspects of the issues that we, humanity, face, that is, economic, social, and environmental. It is very important because, as you know, that type of nexus is the key to understand what the SDGs is all about. Now, many libraries are also mounting an event under the theme of the SDGs. Some university library has organized Harry Potter-like SDG quiz tour at night under the dim light of the eco-friendly solar lantern. Many university libraries count on the power of youth to select the books under the theme of the SDGs for the special exhibit. Many university libraries have also offered the space for the students to demonstrate their presentations on what they have learned from the SDGs. Child librarians at schools are also acting, including by mounting an exhibit of picture books under the theme of the SDGs. Some of them are organizing the SDG book talk, either offline or online, in which the participants pick up a book which they think fall under the theme of the SDGs to introduce them with each other. Through this book talk, the participating children are expanding their perspective to the concept of sustainable development. Importantly, students enjoy talking about the books. Or some student librarians have made eco-friendly bags for their fellow students to bring their books with them to and from the school and home. Or some have designed the book covers out of the used clothing, used papers, etc. Public libraries are supporting the school libraries 
through the renting of the books under their holdings. Many public libraries are mounting exhibits. Under the combined, under such combined themes as SDGs versus art. Libraries are not only promoting the SDGs, but also taking action themselves. They are using solar power generation and saving power by measuring and visualizing how much energy the libraries are using. Many have established the food bank and recycling collection boxes. As such, various activities undertaken by Unique Tokyo's partner libraries have been serving as best practices for many other libraries across the country to follow. In conclusion, the libraries do not necessarily need a lot of money to take their action for the SDGs. A little ingenuity and ideas can allure the attention of library visitors and users to the SDGs to expand their imagination to our common future and urge the visitors and users to take action to help achieve the global goals. This is what our partner libraries are doing. Well, before ending my presentation, let me express my deep appreciation once again to IFLA EMLAS as well as to Japan Library Association. I thank you very much for your attention. Back to you, Loy and Magdalena. Thank you very much, Mr. Koshi. Kiyoshi is a very, very interesting and the important role of libraries playing in uh, in Japan on the uh, SDGs and how they support SDG through libraries. Very indeed, very uh, thankful for sharing your knowledge and also the uh, experiences of uh, implementation of SDG in, uh, in Japan. Uh, with that, we thank you again, Mr. Kiyoshi, and we would like to uh, move on to the third uh, speaker today. There is Miss Linda Naputi. Thank you. Yep. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So, um, half a day. My name is Erlinda Napati, the president of Pacific Island Association of Library Archives and Museums. I am also the library director, the state librarian of the Jotenkizu Public Library, located in Saipan, Northern Marana Islands, and a member of IFLA's Asia and Oceania Division Committee. Piala's mission aims to enhance the quality of leadership in order to support and strengthen libraries, archives, and museums across the Pacific Islands. Piala is a regional association committed to fostering awareness and encouraging cooperation and resource sharing among libraries, archives, museums, and related institutions of the Pacific Islands. In my presentation, we will be covering Piala, SDGs, Bookmobiles as member of Piala, Alele, Bookmobile in the Republic of the Marshall Islands, Palau Bookmobile, and the Joten Kizu Public Library Bookmobile and Technology Mobile Express. The map you see a glance at our geographical location covering most of our Piala members. 
And today we will discuss the vital role of bookmobiles in advancing sustainable development, development goals, especially in Pacific Islands community. Bookmobiles are mobile libraries that reach out to people who cannot access their regular libraries. They bring information, entertainment, and educational resources to the hands of individuals who wish to learn. In this webinar, we will explore how bookmobiles can contribute to achieving sustainable development goals, particularly in education, access to information, and community development. SDG one, no poverty. Bookmobiles help reduce poverty by providing access to education and knowledge that can lead to better job opportunities. SDG 2, zero hunger. Bookmobiles help address hunger by providing books and resources on agriculture, food security, and nutrition education. SDG 3, good health and well being. Bookmobiles promote good health and well being by providing access to medical reference books, health education materials, and mental health resources. SDG 4 Quality ed Education. Bookmobiles can help improve access to education, especially in rural and remote areas. For example, SDG 4 focuses on ensuring inclusive and equitable education for all. By providing access to books and other educational resources, bookmobiles can help to achieve this goal. Education is critical, especially for vulnerable populations, including disadvantaged children and youths. Bookmobiles ensure that they have the same access to educational resources as their counterparts in other communities. The books, magazines, and other educational resources they offer can contribute to meeting sustainable development goals such as reducing illiteracy and increasing enrollment in primary education. Bookmobiles play a vital role in making sure that everyone has access to information, regardless of their geographical location, age, or social status. They can help ensure marginalized people have the same access to information and resources as their counterparts in larger communities. SDG 9, Industry, industry Innovation and Infrastructure. Bookmobiles build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. Under SDG 9, Bookmobiles help bridge uh, the digital divide and promote digital equity. SDG 10, reduce inequalities. Uh, Bookmobiles help reduce inequalities by providing access to education, knowledge and information to underserved communities. Bookmobiles are more than libraries on wheels. They can be the center of community social and cultural development. Aside from promoting reading and learning, bookmobiles can be a place where individuals can engage with one another, share knowledge and skills, and organize community development initiatives. Here you see the beautiful Alele Bookmobile from the Republic of the Marshall Islands. Alele is a nonprofit corporation which includes the National Museum, the Public Library, and National Archives in the, Mar the Republic of the Marshall Islands. The overall mission of Alele is to promote lifelong learning through informational, technological, and cultural literacy needs of all age groups by providing various forms of information, access via traditional means such as printed documents and books, and through videos and digitized and online documents. Alele Public Library maintains the bookmobile collection and is in charge of operation of providing materials and services throughout Majuro. Alele Bookmobile was funded by a previous IMLS grant to provide library services and implementation of interlibrary loan programs to underserved communities in the Republic of the Marshall Islands. So here is just a photo of the children in um, the marshals using their bookmobile. The Palau Public Library was established in 1964, comes under the Ministry of Education. It is the only public library in the Republic of Palau which with collections of 15,000 physical items. The mission of Palau Public Library is to serve as a gateway 
to lifelong learning and easy access to a wide range of information resources to ensure that residents of Palau will be successful, literate, and resourceful in Palawan society and the world. Palau Public Library also houses the Palau Bookmobile collection and is in charge of providing materials and services throughout Koror and Balbidal. The Palau Bookmobile was funded by a previous IMLS grant to provide library services and implementation of interlibrary loan programs to underserved communities in Palau. The Palau Public Library's mission is to serve as a gateway for lifelong learning and easy access to a wide range of information, resources, and to ensure residents of Palau will be successful, literate and resourceful in the Palauan society and the world. A photo of the Palau Bookmobile in 1978 with the driver and a teacher with students holding books from the Palau Bookmobile. The Jolten Kids Public Library Bookmobile provides cultural, cultural, digital, and educational resources and access to information. The Jolten Kids Public Library is the Cinemice Information Hub, preserving Cinemice culture, heritage, and connecting people, libraries, and government to the resources and tools they need to succeed and build a stronger community. JKPO oversees the technical aspects of the library operations for the Bookmobile Technology Mobile Express. The JKPO's Bookmobile is a mini library on wheels making weekly visits to various remote communities located throughout Saipan to provide valuable and free public library services. JKPO Bookmobile is a part of our five-year LSTA strategic plan 2023 to 2027. The Technology Mobile Express is used to promote the JKPO digital catalog of ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines, and streaming videos to underserved and underprivileged communities. Readers of all ages can learn about and engage with digital books at their local school, library, or youth center inside the Technology Mobile Express. Our mission is to help strengthen and enhance the community by providing free library services to those who are unable to use the main library due to physical, social, geographic, or other barriers. We serve people from different cultures, ages, and backgrounds. Most come from low income and underserved communities. The TMA will be ready. Technology Mobile Express will be ready during a state of disaster. Being located in the Pacific, we are enduring the effects of climate changes firsthand. Most recently, on May 30, we encountered Super Typhoon Mawar that hit Guam and the Northern Marana Islands. Our Technology Mobile Express was awarded the most sustainable project through Community Pillars Program under the CNMI Office of the Planning and Development Broadband. And here are just photos of various bookmobile activities throughout our community. In conclusion, bookmobiles play an important role in achieving sustainable development goals. The bookmobile program ensures that everyone has access to, edu has access to educational resources, promotes gender equality, empowers women, reduces inequalities, and foster community development. As we move towards a more equitable and sustainable world, the contribution of bookmobiles in achieving these goals should not be underestimated. Supporting and promoting bookmobiles in our community is essential to build a better world for all. Motivation comes from within. Go for it and get moving. Sizu Smasi, thank you and have a great day. Thank you very much uh, for your very inspiring and interesting uh, presentation, Ms. Elinda. We are very uh, happy and uh, also we learned a lot from your mobile book mobile project uh, that has been implemented. We find that this book mobile are very, very effective in reaching out to those people who do not have access to these uh, libraries, the physical libraries. And book mobiles bring uh, full of joy to, to to all these children. I think every time when the book mobile come, I mean not only I may be in uh, in your place, but also in uh, Malaysia, they also uh, find it very happy when a uh, book mobile were to be stationed at their place. So I think uh, book mobile, like you say in your presentation, 
play an important role in supporting the SDG and also to support our library services, the importance of a library playing in our community development and also our education system. We bring information to them if they cannot access information. So thank you again, Ms. Alinda, for your very inspiring uh, uh, presentation of the Pacific Island. Thank you again. We come to the uh, next speaker, which uh, is not uh, uh, unable to attend today. That is Rashida Bohasan from Malaysia. Uh, she is uh, supposed to do a presentation on the uh, SDGs uh, and Library Association uh, in Malaysia. Uh, perhaps we have a few colleagues here uh, who is attending the webinar. Besides uh, myself, we also have Edison, who is from uh, Sarawak. She's also a librarian from Malaysia and also one of the uh, breakup room for uh, our coordinator, Ms. Farah, also is here. Perhaps they could also share what uh, library associations or library in Malaysia are doing to actually uh, support uh, or not support to be uh, actually a library to be in the forefront of what uh, SDG is uh, 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 helps to bring libraries to the uh, stakeholders to see what library can do in the economic development. For the Librarian Association of Malaysia has been involved in uh, SDG since uh, the SDG uh, uh, was launched and then uh, the Librarian Association has been giving supports to libraries and also to uh, the members on how to actually uh, implement the SDG in the libraries by having uh, talks and also having uh, webinars and they have also invited uh, the uh, members of the librarian association to be facilitators in their workshop and also to help them to write uh, SDG stories so that they will be uh, published in the uh, library map of the world. So far the librarian association of Malaysia has helped to uh, uh, publish uh, one SDG story in the library map of the world and we have also worked in collaboration with uh, the libraries and also the various libraries in Malaysia like the public libraries, the academic library to put up a national or a country report of Malaysia in the uh, country report section of the library map of the world and also the statistics of the libraries in Malaysia. We have been trying to get the uh, the, the contribution of library in the United Nations uh, National Review, but uh, at the moment, we still have not been able to do that, but we are still trying, we are not giving up. We are trying to get in touch with the uh, National Council of the uh, United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goal to have a discussion with them to have the uh, contribution of uh, libraries in their report. And uh, we are happy to say that uh, our efforts are not in vain. We have succeeded like in Sarawak. That's why we have invited uh, Dr. Rashida to share her experience with us today. That, that's the only state in Malaysia that has so far has the uh, special budget for the state to implement SDGs in libraries. That's why we wanted her to speak today about her experience. But uh, maybe I would like to ask Edison, she's also from Sarawak, maybe he could uh, provide more information on this. Uh, Edison? Yeah, thank you, Lojin. Uh, hi, I'm Edison from Sarawak State Library. Um, uh, the Sarawak State Library has been appointed by the uh, uh, Premier Office uh, uh, of, of Sarawak to be the advocacy on SDG since uh, 2000. So uh, there's a special uh, uh, funding that been uh, channeled to our library uh, to do the uh, advocacy since uh, early year, because I think it was during the pandemic. So uh, we embark uh, various uh, advocacy initiative like the uh, 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 current, I mean, uh, uh, to, to do survey on the awareness on SDG among our community throughout Sarawak. So that is currently being uh, implemented. 
and we have been collaborating with various agencies uh, uh, implementing the SDG through our uh, awareness program, like book talk, uh, seminars, webinars, and also uh, recently uh, we, uh, uh, we won the UNESCO Literacy Prize, Confucius Literacy Prize, Literacy Prize 2022 last year on our program on uh, People Accessible Network for Digital Empowerment and Inclusivity where we reach out to rural com co community through education, literacy, digital literacy, through our online platform, e-learning platform, and also in our 42 digital community center throughout Sarawak, where we provide a platform and also a venue for our community to get uh, literate, digital literacy, and also empowerment, uh, woman empowerment on entrepreneurship. So this is under education, uh, SDG4, and we, we uh, really uh, use that platform and also that uh, uh, initiative uh, to, to, to do our advocacy program through our network of library in Sarawak. So uh, apart from that, uh, as mentioned by Loy Jun, uh, the Library Association and or uh, the UNESCO Commission, in fact, did invite us to talk about further about the, the program that we, we embarked on the Pandey, the People Accessible Network on Digital in Inclusivity, uh, which is, I think, slotted in early May, where they want to, uh, um, uh, to know about and to promote that program among community in uh, Asia and also uh, this uh, region. So, uh, because uh, now the Sarawak is uh, moved forward from digital economy 2018 to 2022, we now move forward towards uh, post-COVID uh, 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 post development plan 2030, where uh, inclusive uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, social inclusion is one of the agenda that, uh, uh, that uh, they're promoting uh, how we how inclusive the the, the rural community towards uh, participating uh, uh, the post pandemic development plan of Sarawak 2030. Thank you, uh, Edison, for sharing. Uh, okay, I think we, that's uh, we will have more of the uh, report from Malaysia when we have the recording later on, and it will be distributed to everyone. Uh, in this uh, webinar. Okay, I pass over the uh, next session to uh, Megadina. Thank you. Every, yep. Thank you all the uh, speakers for today. Yep. Thank you, Loitun, and thank you uh, to all our speakers. And But it's not the end. We are in the middle of our webinar. And I would like to invite all our participants, we are very happy that you are with us, uh, to for the discussions in breakout rooms. Uh, we prepared uh, five, five bre breakout rooms, uh, three will be in English and will be moderated by a new professional special interest group uh, members, uh, Borna, Farah and me. Then uh, we will have a room where you can meet and talk with Carmen Lay in Chinese and uh, also with Edison, uh, you, you've just seen it, uh, him uh, in Malaya language. Uh, so I would like to say a few words about discussion. So this part is very important because we would like to share with you with the survey. It would be uh, very helpful for the discussion. You will get the link to a uh, Google form do documents and uh, there will be questions uh, about uh, documents which are in the library associations and which are related to SDGs. If you know that, you just you, you can click it, but it's not a problem if you don't. Um, also, uh, there will be questions, a, a kind of a pledges. It means that we would like to find out more. What do you think? If uh, Do you think that a library association can promote SDGs um, 
more and and it maybe it should be a part of the work we would like to find out uh, your opinion and the last question will be about uh, new professionals uh, young librarians if you think uh, that they would be more uh, involved in sdgs and we would like just just uh, share your opinions in uh, in this survey so our moderators uh, will explain you more questions uh, as i did it and uh, and uh, lead the discussion so i will i've just prepared uh, rooms and i i'm going to open all rooms okay it's done and uh, we need to give uh, a few seconds to, to the Zoom. Uh, so you probably will see uh, the name of the rooms. So just uh, just, uh, just uh, choose which room would you like to, to go. I'm here and I will also, I will be able to help you with that. And okay. To, to say a few words about uh, any reflections, about, uh, about any ideas, what was mentioned in our discussion. I don't want to call uh, anybody from our moderators, just only say if you have a, a few words uh, to, to say. So we have a, a Borna, Farah, Carmen, Edison and, and me. Um, hi, hello everyone. Um, I will be the first one to start. I had a very, very interesting uh, conversation with um, uh, Linda, Mr. Kiyoshi and uh, a couple of more uh, participants. Um, I was uh, asking uh, lots of questions to uh, Ms. Linda Naputi. She had a wonderful presentation before and I was very interesting to learn more about um, um, how libraries and uh, the book mobile functions in the Pacific Islands. And uh, after that, uh, Mr. Kiyoshi joined our break room. So um, we had uh, the pleasure and the honor to um, have him speak for another minute. Um, at the end, he said uh, a very important thing and a very good point that um, it's very important to uh, talk about uh, partnerships and uh, localizations. And he pointed out the fact that uh, libraries should be the link between the general public and uh, institutions regarding not only uh, sustainable development goals, but uh, much more. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Lena, could I make a comment? Yeah, please, please, Winston. Um, I I was not officially supposed to be a moderator in the breakout room, but in the in the breakout room where I found myself, I was the first person to speak. So I got given the job of being a moderator unofficially. But look, I just wanted to say that this webinar has a strong um, emphasis on what's happening in the Pacific. So I want I was interested to see that in my breakout room there was. Uh, a colleague from India, there was a colleague from Sri Lanka, and in fact two, and I was particularly keen to say to them that, you know, we're interested in what they, their experiences are, and also we're, we're interested in the work that's going on in their countries relating um, uh, the work that the associations are doing, working with national authorities on the development of the SDGs in their countries. And the, then the subject of the voluntary national reviews came up. We've done in IFLA, we've done quite a lot of work on the voluntary national reviews. And that is a very important thing that we should maybe just introduce into the general conversation that all associations ought to talk to their national authorities to say to them, we, the associations, are a mechanism for providing you with um, trustworthy data, which can be contributed to your writing of the BNRs, the reviews for the United Nations. And we would like to do that. We have an agenda for doing that. The reason for doing it is so that we can demonstrate 
the economic value of library services in the country. And hopefully that value will be reflected in the in the reviews, the results of the voluntary national reviews, which go to the United Nations. So we are advocating for the library sector in doing that. Okay, that's complicated, sorry. No. <laughs> but very important. Thank you, Winston, for your help. Uh, we also mentioned that uh, that on the IFLA website, there are many useful uh, materials and publications that you can use in uh, promoting SDGs in your libraries and your library associations. So feel free to use all of them. And uh, and our uh, our moderators, Edison, Farah, Carmen, would you like to add some a few words to our discussion? Uh, right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, thank you, Edison. Uh, for 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 my uh, breakout room just now. Thank you for Kim and also Nina from PG and uh, Miss Chin also. So what we what we can conclude that there is a lot of opportunity for young librarian and so young professional to involve with with SDG and also library activity like what Kim shared with us just now. They are focusing on climate action, so it's okay. They could go goes on that and also there is others SDG that might be can involve like quality of education, partnership goals, and also others that related with their own niche in their libraries. So it can be engagement with community easier when you know about the needs of your community and goes by that with the SDG, like what we listened for the previous one in this webinar. Thank you so much. That's come from us. Thank you, Farah. And Edison? Okay, um, maybe I can further uh, share what the Sarawak experience on SDG. Uh, the sustainable thinking brings uh, the alignment of library care, uh, core value and resources to fulfill uh, the crucial weakness. Um, how library all over the world embrace in sustainable thinking in good time uh, during like the COVID-19 pandemic and the post-COVID era for sustainability. Uh, it synergizes well with the Sustainable Development Goal SDG or United Nations. So uh, what was, uh, the state, li uh, state library embrace the sustainable thinking for attainment of goal without inventing a new will. Yeah, but re-strategizing approaches uh, in achieving the global uh, goal or, uh, or agenda 2030. The seven significant role, uh, 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 the seven uh, significant role uh, of uh, United Nations, uh, how Pustaka embrace uh, is through inventing uh, this uh, without inventing this wheel. So uh, uh, the role of information professional that blend well with each SDG is discussed to enlighten readers on the role of library and how achieve its crucial actualizations of sustainable development goal, even before the introduction of SDG of United Nations. So uh, the honor and trust given by the Sarawak State Library uh, of, or by the government of Sarawak to spearhead the awareness and advocacy initiative towards Sarawak, uh, we call in, in uh, a Sarawak language, we call Sarawak Lestari, is considerably deliberate and recommended point at the end for continuous improvement for the library. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Yes. Um, so I'm so happy to join the webinar today, but unfortunately, no one uh, break in, uh, join my breakout session probably. Uh, yeah, we're on just uh, Chinese topics, but I myself do uh, learn a lot about interesting insight from the presenters today. So I'm sure library association around the world can keep this interactive uh, conversation and further be the advocate on SDG topics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen, for, for, for your help. Uh, we will send the link to, to the survey again, and, and I will so also uh, send you the answers to, to, to we'll know uh, how it is in the, uh, with Chinese uh, participants. Uh, so thank you again, our moderators, and uh, we will go to the next point, to our presentations. Um, I'm 
have a pleasure to introduce uh, our next speaker, Kim Tana, uh, a president of the New Zealand Library Association, Lianza. Uh, Kim is a head of the community delivery Tetonga, uh, and she is now in Auckland, in New Zealand. So uh, welcome, Kim, and the floor is yours. Kia ora Magdalena, thank you. I'll just share my screen. One moment. Uh, sharing. Okay. Is that working? Yes, we see. Excellent. Okay. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa and kia ora and good evening. It's evening here in um, Auckland, New Zealand. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity and thank you to Magdalena uh, Loijun and Lloyda and Winston um, for giving me the opportunity to just share a little bit about our Library Association here in New Zealand. Um, I'm going to concentrate what our Library Association is doing as an association rather than particular SDGs. Uh, okay, so thank you very much. And here we go. Firstly, let me just try and change my... One moment. <laughs> my screen. Uh, did that change slides? No, it didn't. Sorry. Maybe you, yeah, Kim, could you start uh, again? It's just stop sharing and share again. Mm, sorry. It's okay, sometimes okay, Zoom um, makes a mistakes. <laughs> okay, one moment, I will just get into this again was perfect when we trialed it, wasn't it? <laughs> One moment. Okay, let me try again. Is that working at all? Okay, hold on. Okay. Can, how's it, nearly there? How's that? Okay, now we see your presentation and okay, try that's to... that's the front page, isn't it? And now we've moved slides? No, we see only the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can share the, the screen, uh, the screen of the computer, not presentation, but uh, the screen of the computer. If you don't, one moment, let me... Sorry about this, everybody. Uh... We still learn in the Zoom. <laughs> I know, it was going perfectly. Um, oh my gosh, hold on. I think I've got too many windows open. Okay, how's that? Is that better? You've got the first thing and then the second screen now? Okay, excellent. Um, and actually, that is just an intro. <laughs> that is uh, the Te Rau Heading or Aotearoa, our library association. So, kia ora. Um, before I talk about our library association though, just checking that you can just see the screen. So that's okay, isn't it Magdalena? Everything works. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, as Winston was saying, I was, when I was looking at my present, at, uh, just thinking about SDGs, generally preparing this presentation, I did come across the fact that there's the summit um, where heads of state um, are attending in September. and. Winston mentioned the progress, the special edition advanced unedited report from the UN Secretary General. And I just wanted to consider some of a couple of his sentences before we go on. As Winston said, um, you could get a little depressed <laughs> by, by his words. So um, some of that report says halfway to 2030, the sustainable development goals are disappearing in the rear view mirror and with them the hope and rights of current and future generations. Uh, he also says, they also say we can do better and in moments of severe challenge, humanity has always come through and it's time to sound the alarm. So uh, I just will just leave that there for a minute. Um, but it was very thought provoking, just, just reading that report. I'm um, thinking about the work that we do in libraries and how, how we can make a difference. Um, now, let me just talk about a little bit that our Library Association has done. Just going back a little bit, uh, we have um, contributed to 
um, a report from the government towards a better future together, our progress to the S SDGs, and we also contributed to the People's Report on the 2030 Agenda and, and SDGs. We've hosted webinars and one included in an, an address from Loida. Um, Leanza presidents have presented at conferences on SDGs. Uh, and we've, as an association, really tried to emphasize the work, this important work. We have, this is our, uh, the national um, journal of our association. Um, I did a little kind of search within, within it and there's at least 20 times in the last couple of years where we have had columns or articles about SDGs. Um, quite recently, we did share quite a lot of the climate action, um, uh, I want to use the Māori word kōrero, which is uh, speaking about um, IFLA Willock in 2022. We also um, helped this publication, the SDG Stories from Asia and Oceania. Now this was from 2021, but it includes uh, India, Sri Lanka, Kazakhstan, Singapore, Thailand, uh, Korea, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Lebanon stories. And I think for the Asia Oceania committee, the, um, there is a plan to collect more of those stories and publish, and publish them from Asia Oceania. Um, we have been very lucky in New Zealand to have to have Winston Roberts as the Asia Oceania Chair, just because of the um, we're quite a small we're a small country, so everyone knows everyone pretty much in our profession, um, and we have been able to collaborate really well. And just having uh, Winston as Chair has been really helpful. Um, but we've got a, and we do have a small number of New Zealanders on the IFLA committees. So on the incoming in August, um, I'm going to be on the Asia Oceania committee. Um, we have people on the E4 GD8 along with Edison. Um, we've got, I belong to NCLIB. We've got people on libraries, buildings and equipment, library theory and research section and literacy and reading. So together, we really hope it's a small but mighty team who can really leverage the IFLA and Library Association, all those people are Library Association members as well. I just, I, we really hope that that will be a um, really good way to leverage both associations and achieve um, our goals, particularly around the SDGs. Um, as president, I was lucky enough to attend the IFLA Asia Oceania Regional Workshop in Bangkok as an invited person and Claire and Erlinda, who I know are out there and um, Erlinda has spoken already, Claire's about to speak. We were lucky enough to attend that meeting, but there was also a Pacific um, day. Uh, Nina is on this, on this call as well. Um, I just thought I'd throw the picture of um, Erlinda and I and to Leah, also on the Asia Oceania Regional Division. So um, we did more than uh, <laughs> take selfies. We spoke really seriously about how New Zealand, particularly New Zealand and the Pacific can connect. And uh, we, um, we realized there was, map, there was work to do on the library map of the world. We don't actually have any stories up for the New Zealand or many of the Pacific islands. And so I think that meeting in Bangkok really, um, made us, gave us great connections. Um, and so that we have got some ideas around having a working group across Pacific, leveraging um, the Pacific Libraries Network that always already exists and a special interest group with, of Pacifica librarians, of which I am one, my dad's from Rarotonga in the Cook Islands, um, where we can really work together uh, to, to work on the, the SDG work within the Pacific. Uh, oh, also, I just would like to mention Christine Pabertza from IFLA, who has really um, offered her expertise to us uh, as well. Um, Lever, Devnet, this is a picture of a conference that actually Winston Roberts again talk, liaised with us. We um, we. We need to talk to everyone, people that aren't just ourselves. Um, so this is a development network um, and this particular conference was held in Auckland in December. And in our submission, we said that we would talk about library, how library services play an essential ro role, particularly around 
SDG4. And that the SDGs are strongly interconnected and libraries directly and indirectly support and encourage the promotion of literacy, basic literacy and digital literacies. Um, and advocate for equitable access to information. It was quite a coup, I think, that we were able to speak at this um, conference. And what we did was uh, Lianza sponsored using some Pacific Libraries Network um, uh, money as well. Uh, a librarian from, two librarians from Samoa, uh, one from Tulia from Fiji, and our own president-elect Richie Misile, who is Samoan to speak about libraries and SDGs at this conference. So a, a really different audience. Um, and I think the more we talk to people that aren't just library conferences, the better. Uh, other things, Lianza, oh, and there's actually, sorry, there's a picture of Tongi and Laini from Samoa speaking at the conference. Um, in terms of our documentation, Lianza um, has a new draft strategic plan. It's nearly not draft. Um, we do have key advocacy points in it around sustainability and climate action, and particularly, again, engaging with IFLA and the Pacific Library Network to support the library and information sector in the Pacific. Uh, other documents, um, we do have a standing committee on climate action. It's underway, um, but a lot of very enthusiastic librarians are putting their hands up for that. And then in terms of some of the advocacy and influence into government, there is a review into the future for local government, which runs public libraries in New Zealand. And I'm a public librarian, apart from being a Lianza president. Um, we did manage to um, put a couple of sentences in, in our big review around saying that actually the original document that we put a submission in on had no mention of the 2030 SDGs. And that if insufficient attention was given to climate change and environment sustainability. We did uh, have actually get some feedback from one of the, I think they're called commissioners, um, who spoke at a library conference and, and congratulated us on our, our excellent um, submission. So I hope it will be taken, so we'll have some influence there. Uh, at our library conference this year, unfortunately, there is no online option. However, we have two uh, keynote speakers who are very uh, relevant to uh, climate change and SDGs. Uh, Michael Edson, he has, um, amongst other things, he was a juror, a juror for Cumulus Green 2020, which is a global design competition, um, looking for solutions to SDG and the UN SDGs. And um, our very own Professor Rangi Matamua. Uh, I mention Professor Matamua because uh, Māori knowledge or Matauranga Māori, um, Indigenous knowledge, um, you know, puts great importance on the in interconnectedness of the environment, people and cultural well-being, which completely resonates with the holistic approach of the SDGs. Um, there's several examples within uh, Māori Indigenous knowledge, which um, completely speak to the SDGs. And if we respectfully work with, in New Zealand, work with Māori or wherever work with your Indigenous knowledge, um, you know, there's unique cultural connections there. Um, and the SDGs can then foster a more comprehensive and culturally respectful approach towards achieving a sustainable and inclusive future for everyone. Uh, that I was speaking about our library association, but I then I thought I'd just quickly give an example of where we, I think it's an example of that we spoke of in the breakout rooms where some work's going on, but we don't always connect it to the SDGs. For this particular library, um, very a very young staff, it's one of our new builds, um, and they are absolutely enthusiastic about climate change, um, but then we kind of did a little bit of work with them and said, all of, the, all of the work that you're doing actually clicks to SDGs. So one really good example within this library is that there is a public kitchen and it's called a farikai uh, 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 in, in, Mo, in the Māori language. And it's a fully functional kitchen space and stocked with um, food for whoever wants to come in and use it. This is just in the midst of the library. And so it's a focus on welcoming everyone into the facility. 
but what we do is run programs supporting food literacy and food security, which supports SDG 3 and 11, when we pointed this out to the team, who are already doing this work. Um, and we also have a relation to SDG 8. This is some of the staff, I'm in the background, but um, partnering with a recruitment agency with uh, youth and families who've not been in jobs before, and we um, particularly kept some roles um, to work with the group called Up Tempo to support families um, into meaningful employment, which completely relates to SDG4 and is promoted through an intergenerational approach to programming as well. Um, and just circling back to the paper from the United um, the UN Secretary General about sounding the alarm, what can we do? We can, as a library sector, we can keep providing unbiased information, enable di digital literacy for all, preserve heritage documentation, and provide comprehensive and honest data to decision making. Um, our library associations can keep on providing platforms, advice, and encouragement. And we can keep holding debates, commissioning research, developing policy, and commenting on government proposals. None of these are new ideas, but we need to lean in you know, the alarm has been sounded, we need to keep going and be committed as uh, speakers before me tonight have said. Um, we must lobby for national support for libraries, particularly around the SDGs and join forces and support IFLA because IFLA is doing great work as part of the international community of NGOs who are hammering on governments and corporate doors. We should not give up and to slightly misquote the UN Security General, we can keep doing better. Kia ora. Thanks Magdalena, that's me. I thank you Kim for your presentation. <laughs> we are very happy that, uh, that you are with us uh, today and also we are happy that you were with us uh, last year when we organized <laughs> with us an, another webinar about uh, leaders and I see that leaders uh, work in New Zealand and we are very happy of it. Our next speaker also um, attended in our last uh, year webinar about leaders and uh, today we are also very happy that she she comes, Lauren Pei from Fiji. Uh, I see that Lauren connected with us and uh, Lauren is a president of the Fiji Library Association and we'll uh, say more about uh, how they uh, promote SDGs. But we need to wait a few seconds for Lauren. Lauren, are you with us? Um, oh. Hi, uh, hi, I'm here. I'm just trying to, uh, I need to share my, um, my um, PowerPoint slide. Mm -hmm. uh, are you able to to open uh, to turn on your camera? Yes, I was. I able oh. Oh, <laughs> nice to see you, Lauren. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'll just share my PowerPoint slide um, with mm -hmm. you. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see PowerPoint slide. Yeah. I Okay, we are still waiting. Sorry, are oh, you, uh, able yes. to see my PowerPoint slide? Yes, oh, okay. we see. But Lauren, uh, I think that there is an option to, to use uh, 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 this uh, presenter uh, module of uh, in PDF in presentation. It's that we because now we will see your presentation at all with all slides. And if you oh, it's mm -hmm. when you go down on the right, there could be yeah, this one. We need to give uh, yes. a, a, this one uh, to to the right to the right. Uh, it's it's yeah this this like the screen mm -hmm. to the right. Okay. Uh, oh dear. 
you know, it's a, like a, a black oh, board. Is this, is it this one? Mm, wait, 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 because Zoom uh, is frozen. No, on the, on the down, uh, there is a minus and plus, and near there, there is icon, uh, a keyboard, uh, a, a screen, and I think that you can use it. Okay. If it's a problem, maybe we can go with what we have. Lorraine? Oh, yeah. It's you. What is happening? Uh, we, we lost a uh, connection with, uh, with your screen. I apologize for uh, our participants for that. I think that it's about the internet of connection hour. So we don't uh, have power on it, but we can we can manage the problem okay okay and we can start with with what we have now okay uh bulavnaka to everyone and um thank you very much to ikla for um for uh, inviting me to be part of this uh, webinar presentation this evening. Uh, I apologize, the, the uh, weather out in Fiji is uh, pouring heavy, so um, I'm getting the signal um, in that unstable. So I hope uh, you'll be able to hear what I'd like to share. Uh, it's just a uh, revisit of our role in the SDG's uh, strategic plan, uh, libraries as advocates of SDGs and applications for less. Uh, I am the uh, president, newly elected president, and uh, I have uh, council members who are also president, uh, present here with me. Uh, there's Nina Nakora, she's also a member of IFLA Asia Oceania. Um, oh, we we lost Lauren. Lauren, uh, I think that we. Sorry, because... I, I didn't. Uh... Sorry, I, I think uh, I, was it the connection on the end? Yeah, it was the problem with the okay, internet apologies. of connection. It's uh, okay. Okay, um, okay. So quickly, uh, maybe so that, uh, and I'll, I wish to also mention that our members, our, we do not have a full office, uh, meaning a, um, a, a, a office that looks after the association activities and events. Uh, we volunteers are looking after the library association. So I basically work as a librarian with the regional libraries at the University of South Pacific. And my colleague is also here joining me this evening, Nina Nalpora, who works for the International uh, Library. Uh, so now uh, for the library, I must, I'd like to mention that it has been um, advanced labs Uh, Lorraine, I see that there is uh, still a problem with internet. Uh, maybe we can uh, we can try again later. Is it fine for you? Maybe it will be a little bit later after our next presenter, our next speaker. Yes, probably yes. Please, uh, I'll have okay. to. Yeah. Probably okay. I'll go to the next one. Okay, Thank so uh, so Lorraine, if you have time, please send uh, presentation to me. 
and I will help you with sharing. And now uh, I would like to introduce our speaker, next speaker, Claire. Uh, Claire Ford from uh, Australia, a vice president of the Australian Library Information Association Alia. We are very happy to uh, to meet uh, Claire and uh, to have opportunity to know more what uh, Australian Library Association do uh, about SDGs. So uh, Claire, the floor is yours. Thank you, Magdalena. Uh, so I'm joining you today from Yugen Bear Country in southeast Queensland. The Australian Library and Information Association is the national peak body for the Australian library and information sectors. And we strongly support the sustainable development goals and promote libraries roles in driving and accelerating progress in our communities. One of the ways that we've made this quite explicit in a, as a commitment is to add it, the SDGs to our Library Association constitutional objects. Winston spoke earlier about voluntary national reviews and in 2018 Australia's voluntary national review recognised the role of libraries as enabling stakeholders in the communities that they serve and as places which can bring people together to engage in participatory democracy. However, we recognise that for libraries to accelerate progress for the goals, it's important to think about how the goals can be meaningfully translated and implemented in the Australian library context. So in 2021, Alia, in partnership with other library representative organisations, launched 10 stretch targets to aim for. So the 10 targets are grouped under headings that are very simple to read and understand and they use language that libraries can use to tie these targets to strategic plans or documents that the organisations they sit within may have. So for example, the strategic plan for a local government organisation or a university. Each stretch target is aligned with one or two of the strategic of the sustainable development goals, either at the 17 goal level or the 169 targets. They link to practical Australian specific actions and they include activities that were already underway and need to be further extended or new activities that we are encouraging people across the sector to embrace. There are reporting requirements to keep ourselves accountable and to measure impact. So these 10 stretch targets are a way of translating the 17 goals and the 169 targets to our sector in Australia with a really tangible aspiration and outcome that we can measure and that our libraries and their teams can get behind. So to start the measurement process, we developed a baseline report and that describes some of the key activities that have occurred both within our association and Australian libraries over the past couple of years. I'll highlight a couple of things from the report this, up to this evening. Stretch target four, sustainable communities, particularly addresses Sustainable Development Goal 13, the urgent need to take action on climate change. In addressing this, Alia is very aware that actions are needed both across the sector and we need to take accountability as an organisation. One of the ways to start for us as librarians was with research and evidence. And the Greening Libraries report released last year identified national and international examples of good practice and provided a toolkit for libraries to help them bridge the gap between what they aspire to and what's achievable. This work will be further extended later this year at the Greening Libraries Conference in Mianjin, Brisbane, and we welcome anyone who is able to attend to do so. Looking internally, the ALIA board has committed the association to be carbon neutral by 2030, and we will conduct a carbon audit this year in order to measure our progress. Stretch target five is about working in collaboration with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people 
to ensure that Australian libraries have adopted practices to, with, in, to, with access to collections and services and workplaces that are culturally informed, safe and respectful. We know that there is much we need to do in the reconciliation and truth telling space and to address and make up for the impacts of colonialization and racism on Australians First Nation people. And while these activities in the baseline report are provisionally mapped to SDG 4.7, the activities described here also map to SDG 10 reduced inequalities and SDG 16 peace and justice. Workforce in particular was a key issue, with many people, including myself, who had completed their library education in the past, not having been at that time exposed to First Nation contexts and histories. So increasing our cultural competency, knowledge and our allyship is vitally important. The Professional Pathways Project, which is a whole of industry refresh, of library core skills, knowledge and ethics in Australia, will embed two First Nation domains in the framework. First, it is a core domain for respect and recognition. And then there is a, a specialist professional knowledge domain covering Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander contexts in library and information services. We are committed to building the cultural capability and competency of our, of our library and information staff bringing Aboriginal ways of knowing and working throughout industry and community, amplifying the voices of First Nations people and ensuring that our libraries are safe workplaces and inviting and safe, welcoming communities. The actions identified in the stretch targets have led to work beyond the original stretch targets. And that has included funding research about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in the library workforce, which was conducted, conducted by Dr. Kirsten Thorpe. We've also established ALIA's Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Expert Advisory Group to provide our members with a voice and agency in the governance of the association. And we've recently provided resources to libraries to support their communities in the upcoming voice referendum. One completed activity relates to Stretch Target 5 and Sustainable Development Goal 3, Good Health and Wellbeing. Last year, with our partner, the Good Things Foundation, Alia supported the Your Health in, in Your Hands program, a series of digital health literacy webinars to help Australians develop skills that are critical in, to ensure that they make informed, confident choices when supporting their health and wellbeing online. Another key way of ensuring that SDG implementation continues to grow is through the creation of sector specific resources, such as the SDG guide for school libraries. While ALIA works with members across a whole range of different types of libraries, resources that are tailored for specific contexts really help our library staff to implement actions on the ground. And they provide support for SDG outcomes, strategic reporting and planning at the library level. The School Libraries Report and resources, including the School Libraries Advocacy Campaign, all contribute, of course, to SDG 4 around quality education and highlight the important role of libraries in achieving quality education for all. So ALIA is really committed to ensuring that everyone who contributes to our sector is not only aware of the SDGs, that has the resources and tools that they need to be able to engage with them meaningfully to enact real change. And we are committed to working with our partners across and beyond the Australian library sector and across the region to help accelerate progress to the goals. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Claire, for your presentation. It was a pleasure to, to find out more what uh, Australian Library Association uh, did and is doing uh, for SDGs. Uh, I got a message uh, from uh, Lauren Pei from Fiji, uh, our last presentation, that there is a problem with, uh, with internet connection. So we really apologize uh, all our participants for that. But, Lori, but Lauren pre will prepare a recording uh, for, of her presentation and uh, we new professionals will try to 
combine all presentation and give you one recording uh, to all of us. So it would be a great uh, material, but give us a few days for that. So um, I think that uh, we uh, heard uh, all our presentation and uh, I would like to give microphone to Loi Jun to moderate also to our webinar. And uh, just to using this a few seconds, uh, to, I would like to also say thank you to all of you. And I would like to invite you for the next uh, webinar about the Europe. It will, it will be in the uh, June uh, 11th. So I will share uh, a, a screen very quickly uh, with me and, and you will see that's every webinar uh, about the Europe, July 11. So um, the, you have here uh, contacts to MLAS, to Twitter, Facebook, and to IFLA list. Uh, we will prepare recording and send it to all IFLA list and the recording will be available on YouTube channel. So um, my microphone is going to the Leuton. We can't hear you, Leutun. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Madelina, and thank you again to all our distinguished, uh, distinguished speaker and very experienced speaker. We actually learn a lot, even though it's just uh, almost uh, we are here for two hours. We have learned a lot from what the uh, region, the Asia Pacific region, has done towards the contributions of uh, the libraries to the SDGs. Uh, we can use this uh, experience to implement uh, in in other library association in the Asia Oceana. Asia Oceana is the largest uh, region um, uh, the, in the IFLA. We have more than 65 countries. And I'm sure with this uh, webinar, it will be a start to all the other library association to help to uh, them to contribute to the uh, SDG through libraries and library association. We look forward to bringing the information example of your work to inspire library association, uh, supporting development effort in the Asia Oceania region. We, we appreciate your experience and also your invaluable insights that you have given us this afternoon or this evening or this morning. So uh, we also like to uh, thank Mr. Winston uh, for his uh, support, very strong support, and also for his leadership in this Asia Oceania region. Even though he said this is only uh, a two, a very new uh, structure in uh, IFLA, but I think this has been one of the most uh, active and also uh, has contributed a lot to IFLA activities and also to the region in Asia Pacific. We are very happy and we thank you for your work in the Asia Oceania region and also all your committee members. With that, I end the session today with saying uh, thank you. Uh, in, in Chinese and Tumrikase in Malay to everyone for your time and it's been a pleasure having all of you in this webinar. See you again in the next webinar or in Rotterdam. Thank you to all the speakers again and the moderator. Thank you.